Hello, Ita Laira. I'm Peter Brunisch. And we started working together on this project uh, called Performing Multilingualism. When Peter approached me to say, there's this call um, for funding for research into multilingual um, research. And we thought, really speak, this really speaks to us uh, scholars. We both speak English as a second language, right? So I'm Italian. I'm German. And yes, for us as European theatre scholars working in the UK, multilingualism is a key part of our work, of the artists we work on, we work about, the artists we research. And here we find ourselves in the UK working in a very much English-dominated language with little exposure to other languages spoken on stage. The theatre artists we're interested in often create performances in a variety of languages, including European, Asian and African languages. Think of, for instance, uh, the Brussels-based NID company, the Polish director Krzysztof Warlikowski, Catalan director Angelika Lidl, Croatian director Oliver Frilich, Swiss directors Milo Hau and Christoph Marteller, British director Katie Mitchell, and many, many more. These artists combine different languages on stage to represent, explore and question the ethics and politics of our multicultural post-colonial societies. Multilingual theatre is now a key trend on continental stages. Yes, I mean, it's fair to say, you know, if you walk about in the streets of London every day on the bus, going to uh, the supermarket, you always encounter somebody speaking a different language. It is part of our everyday life to encounter, to have to deal with, to have to interact with people speaking different languages and coming from different cultures. Um, because language really is culture. And I think um, there's very little in the theatre that we come across uh, in the UK that reflects um, this status, this, um, this state of being, this contemporary um, multilingual state of being that um, society um, offers us. And there are so many possibilities um, that the theatre could play with. Uh, many of our students come from uh, different uh, countries and speak different languages and we wanted to highlight um, how in this space um, we tend to speak English all the time but um, it doesn't have to be so. Peter and I jumped at the funding opportunity offered by Creative Multilingualism, a research project headed by the University of Oxford and supported by the Arts and Humanities Research Council. We decided to invite two multilingual theatre artists to work with our students at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama to think about what opportunities might be afforded by using more than one language on stage, while at the same time acknowledging the fact that people in the audience might not understand them. We also organised a conference on multilingual theatre at the University of Kent in September 2019. We had our first workshop in April 2019 with Greek director Anestis Adzas, who proposed to work on an adaptation of von Horvat's novel The Eternal Philistine, which is about the European adventures of a crooked petty bourgeois on the make. We had 18 students from Kent, Central and Berlin Freie Universität speaking 13 languages. Um, the use of different languages uh, on stage is uh, somehow a way to, uh, yes, to make, to make a reality out of this utopia which uh, theatre always has to be. I mean, we have the incredible privilege to work in theatre. Uh, and, and, and then we have to explore new realities and we have to try to, uh, to make uh, somehow, at least on the stage, a kind of a utopia possible. And uh, this utopia that uh, I have in mind has uh, different languages and not only one. We worked on improvisations, warm-up games and adapted a short section of the novel. One of the crucial moments in the workshop was a discussion on the ethics of representing other languages on stage. How can you sensitively perform a cultural identity other than your own? How can you avoid damaging forms of appropriation? Then we had our second workshop in July 2019 with French director Anne Berelovitch. Our 14 students from Kent, Central and Paris Conservatoire 
spoke 11 languages and worked on improvisations and set scenes. Anne proposed to work with Molière's Le Misanthrope and also let the students come up with scenes of their own in which characters code-switched or encountered others who speak different languages. I wanted all the languages that were present in this group, which is about nine or ten, to come out as much as possible on stage, which is why I use some improvisation exercises that I usually use to, to kind of support people in using the diversity of languages they have at their disposal. And they are usually trained to acting in one language. So these exercises are devised to help them jump into whichever other languages they know in life, but no, don't necessarily use on stage. Our conversations during Anne's workshop revolved around how to make audiences enjoy the sound of other languages without missing out on the story. Peter and I learnt a lot from being in the rehearsal room with Anne, Anestis and the students. As we planned our conference and subsequent edited collection of essays, we were left with more questions than answers. How is practising multilingual theatre a political act? What is the ethics of multilingual theatre practice? What is the role of the audience in co-constructing the meaning of multilingual performance? How can actor training change to serve multilingual performance? How is multilingualism negotiated by theatre makers in the rehearsal room? Why do we need multilingual performance? How is practising multilingual theatre a political act? What is the ethics of multilingual theatre practice? What is the role of the audience in co-constructing the meaning of multilingual performance? How can actor training change to serve multilingual performance? How is multilingualism negotiated by theatre makers in the rehearsal room? Why do we even need multilingual performance? Pleasure to be here uh, again uh, for this exciting day of performing multilingualism in Europe and beyond. We believe multilingual theatre is an exciting field. For performers, researchers and audiences alike, it multiplies possibilities and challenges the insularity of monocultural, monolingual ways of making performance. We are excited to keep working together in this field.